Engineer 775 working on water independence for a, for a family and I'm using a, a midnight combiner to a, allow um, a Grunfoss pump. Uh, I've kind of put the combiner between, well I did put the combiner between the solar array and the Grunfoss control. The Grunfoss is a submersible rotor pump, very good pump, and we're going to be pumping up to an elevated tank. The pump's very efficient, and for the size of solar I have, it probably will only take about a, a day at tops to half a day, maybe in some cases, to fill that tank. So the other six days, we wanted to use the breaker on the right. Um, what we're going to do there is we're going to charge a battery bank in the basement of the home and um, run a 24-volt um, system off of this array. You can't run them sim you can run them simultaneously, but there's a problem with the when the charge controller does its sweep uh, to check on the power coming in, it sh ends up interrupting and establishing a new uh, voltage level, which shuts the Grunfoss down, and it has, the Grunfoss pump has to recalibrate. So, I um, unless we use a float switch and a relay, um, we're going to run the system manually when the tank is full, and you'll have an indicator on the Grunfoss. You'll have a, the tank full indicator, so it's not like it's really hard to figure out what's going on. So when the tank's full, then you can charge your batteries all you want. And uh, so that's that's pretty much it. So we are we we hung the um, um, submersible off of a pitless adapter. There's another pitless adapter for their regular pump. So we have two connections, and then we are taking off to the trench. We've done a lot of Fort a lot of wire pulling and plumbing here. Fortunately, there were some existing conduits we took advantage of and made this little connection here. So I have tank full, full on the left and um, high volt. I'm separating out my low voltage and high voltage here. That's why I did this. And so the one on the right is the high voltage, 135 volts for them from this array heading down this line and, and into the house, into the basement. I'll show you that later. And then this conduit continues up, and the gentleman just didn't want to trench all this, so because he had existing conduit. So we're using it, we're pulling, and everything's working pretty good. So let's get this thing dialed in. We've already pumped water with it, so we know it works. So it's now it's buttoning it up and doing a lot of plumbing up the mountain. Okay, we are just clearing the tree. So we are just starting to pump water. You'll see the kilowatts come up on on the display, we're at 110 watts, and you can see when you're pumping water, the indicator shows you're pumping water. That indicator there is when the tank's full, and then there's another red one if we hit the low water sensor. So as we get into the sun more, we're going to uh, see the wattage go up. There's 580 watts max on the panel, so what I've found, this thing runs right around 400 watts really smoothly. Always at the end of uh, water security is a lot of trenching, a lot of plumbing to get us up to our tank. I'll show you inside our tank, but the tank is the, the key to having all the volume and pressure that you need. All right, always at the end of the line is our water storage tank. Food grade, this is a 1,050 tank, and again, as you've seen before, you could manifold in multiple tanks if you wanted. But we try to go with the least amount of tank to have a good turnover rate, to have uh, fresh water for the home all the time. We don't want to do a 2,500 or 5,000 gallon tank if you're only using a couple hundred gallons a day. So it's just a, it's a good thing to start small and you have fresher water. So we're about, we can see our, I don't know if we can see it on, the, on film, but there's the condensation line right there. It's... Uh, we see the water on the outside, so we're about a third, uh, we're over a third of the way full now. And we'll be full here in a couple hours, and that's always a good feeling. Okay, so just showing you some of the lines, about 500 feet up to the tank there. We tee off and we put a hydrant for the chickens, and then another trench is down to the garden, and a garden sink to prep and, prep and wash all the veggies. And then a trench. There was some existing plumbing for a, a, a building that was going to go in this location, and so we tied on to the conduits and the, 
the water lines that were already here and uh, that made for us not to have to trench all the way and tear up the lawn any more than we usually do. So we have some tie-ins here. I don't know if you can see that with the pecs and electrical connections and we're good to go. Okay. Okay, folks, I am uh, just finished up the water system, and this is an add-on um, that I, you've seen in a previous video. i am actually installed it at the customer's house. So we have a uh, system working fantastic. It's just a little 24-volt um, solar generator that's more modular, but it has better components than you'll find in most solar generators that you on, on the market. We've got pure sine wave inverters. The Samlex have done really well. Midnight combiners, midnight charge controllers, top of the line, and we went with some Trojan gel cells just uh, um, just because um, they're excellent, excellent batteries, and folks really didn't want to have a lead lead acid battery to maintain. So here we go. Um, also put a battery tender, 24 volt, for while things are working fine. We're gonna use the battery tender to keep the batteries charged and floated. And then in a grid down scenario, once their water tank is full, they're gonna redirect all the solar energy to this system. And we're gonna rewire some receptacles in, up into the house on the first floor so that they can uh, run, this, uh, run this inverter and uh, be good to go. Um, so, and while I'm down here, show you what, you know, this is the, their existing system that they had. I just took pecs from, this water comes from the, the tank up on the hill, and their well pump is off, and I teed in here, and I have shutoffs for my system. I call it my system, but you know what I mean. So we've tested the water pressure. Everybody's very happy with where we're sitting, and uh, right at 30, 36 PSI constant, which validates that we're about 80 feet up in the air. So that is that is great and I guess that's it we also know we have a UV system we could actually run the UV off our little modular solar generator that we put in the basement here so it's kind of a way to guarantee that nobody gets sick from any water issues in a grid down scenario too so you could still run your uh, UV control module uh, for the water system so that about wraps it up and also got the ability, if they want to use their grid pump, they could fill the tank on the hill too. So, got to have backups to backups. So hopefully this helped you in your planning for your water security. Um, folks are excited. It's always fun to see the water come out of the line and it being done with direct drive solar. And then when they turn on the shower at the highest level in the house and they can't tell the difference between their previous system and the new solar system, that's very rewarding. So. Like always, if we can help you in any way achieve water independence, let us know. Send me an email, give me a call. Emails are best, and uh, we'll try to get try to help you uh, get your system set up. All right, this is Engineer Seven Seven Five signing out.